नमस्कार वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज साई रमुजा एंड विद मी इज आर एस रघु bringing glimpses of the major developments of the day from across the globe over the next half an hour we shall bring you the latest from the world of politics economy sports entertainment and more the headlines about 18000 indians stranded in ukraine brought back by special flight so far under operation ganga new delhi says all indian students safely evacuated from sumi city of ukraine India raises concerns at UN Security Council over humanitarian crisis in Ukraine calls for immediate ceasefire and need to return to the path of dialogue and diplomacy India and China decide to hold 15th round of core commander level talks on the 11th of this month international flights to and from India to resume from 27th of March India's President Ramnath Govind, Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi extend greetings on International Women's Day. India tops medal tally with four gold, two silver and one bronze in International Shooting Sport Federation World Cup in Cairo. And in Women's Cricket World Cup, Australia defeat Pakistan by 7 wickets in round robin match. As we start the bulletin we appeal to our listeners to stay safe from covid-19 by following these four simple steps get fully vaccinated wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail a total of 410 indians stranded in ukraine were brought back by two special civilian flights from sochava in romania under operation ganga on tuesday The Civil Aviation Ministry said about 18,000 Indians have been brought back by special flight so far. More than 15,500 Indians have been airlifted by 75 special civilian flights, while the Indian Air Force has flown 12 missions to bring back 2,467 passengers as part of Operation Ganga. The Civil Aviation Ministry has said among the civilian flights 4,575 passengers have been brought back from Bucha rest by 21 flights. 1820 from Suchawa by 9 flights 5571 from Budapest by 28 flights it added that 909 passengers were brought back by 5 flights from Kosice 2404 Indians from Rezzo by 11 flights and 242 persons by a flight from Kiev The External Affairs Ministry of India has said that all Indian students stranded at Sumi city of Ukraine have been successfully moved out In a tweet, the External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi said, "These students are en route to Poltava from where they will board trains to Western Ukraine." He added, "Flights under Operation Ganga are being prepared to bring the students from their homes." India has said that the worsening situation in Ukraine and ensuing humanitarian crisis deserves our immediate and urgent attention. In the meeting called by United Nations Security Council to discuss the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, New Delhi said that an estimated 1.5 million refugees have sought shelter in neighboring countries of Ukraine over the last 11 days. In a speech at a council meeting on Monday, India's permanent representative to the UN, TS Tirumurthy said, there is a pressing humanitarian crisis in Ukraine that needs to be addressed expeditiously. The permanent representative said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi once again spoke to the leadership of both sides and reiterated India's call for immediate ceasefire. and the need for both parties to return to the path of dialogue and diplomacy he said india has reiterated urgent demand for safe and uninterrupted passage for all innocent civilians including indian nationals remaining in ukraine india and china have mutually decided to hold the 15th round of co commander level talks at the indian side of chushul molo meeting point on 11th of this month 14 rounds of talks till now have resulted in resolution of north and south bank of pangong so galwan and gogra hot spring areas defense sources said both sides will now focus to achieve resolution of balance friction areas they said recent statements by both sides to find a mutually acceptable solution have been encouraging and positive in nature 
International flights to and from India will be resumed from 27th of this month. The Civil Aviation Ministry had suspended the regular international flights in March 2020 in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. The ministry said after having recognized the increased vaccination coverage across the globe and in consultation with the stakeholders, the government has decided to resume scheduled commercial international passenger services to and from India from 27th of this month. The suspension of scheduled commercial international passenger services to and from India thus stands extended till 23.59 hours on 26th of March and air bubble arrangements shall accordingly be extended to this extent only. International Women's Day is being celebrated on the 8th of March today. The day is observed every year on this day to commemorate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. The day also marks a call to action for accelerating women's equality. We have a report. The theme for this year is hashtag break the bias. As part of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, week-long celebrations to mark International Women's Day have also been held since the 1st of March in New Delhi. The week-long events culminated with the conferment of the Nadi Shakti Puruskar for the years 2020 and 2021 by Indian President Ramnath Kovind at Rashtrapati Bhavan on Tuesday. In all, the awards were conferred on 29 outstanding women achievers in recognition of the exceptional work towards empowerment of women, especially the vulnerable and marginalized. The award ceremony for the year 2020 could not be held in 2021 due to the prevalent situation created by COVID-19 pandemic. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkai Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have greeted the people on International Women's Day. In his message, President Kovind said women are making exemplary contributions in all works of life. Vice President Naidu call upon people to collectively strive to build a gender-neutral world by ensuring that women are not discriminated against in any form. On Women's Day, Prime Minister Modi has saluted the Nadi Shakti and the accomplishments in diverse fields. Mr. Modi said government will keep focusing on women empowerment through his various schemes with an emphasis on dignity as well as opportunity. Abhishek Mukhopadhyay for World News. In today's Hotspot section, we bring you a discussion on International Women's Day. International Women's Day, a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. In simple words, it means that each human, no matter their gender, has the advantage of all human rights, respect, power and opportunities to form choices about their lives. Gender bias remains a significant impediment to women's career advancement. And this is the theme of this year's Women's Day. And today we have with us eminent women spreading the message of Nari Shakti. Well, friends, today we have with us Madam Niharika Vora, the Vice Chancellor at the Delhi Skill and Entrepreneurship University and a professor of IIM Ahmedabad. So, ma'am, what are your thoughts on the gender bias issue, the theme which has been selected as an International Women's Day this year? Well, I think we are 50% of the population, give and take 1% or 2% here and there. And yet, if you see our representation in various fields, we don't, we are not 50%. So this is just a good example of how possibly there are various factors, including biases, that are playing in women's representation not being equal in all fields. Ma'am, as we are celebrating the Azadi Ka Mahotsav, all of us know all over yes. India we are celebrating this. And what are the changes that you might have noticed? There has been a move from, let's say, 75 years ago or when we got independent to today. And over the years, temporarily, there has been more and more equity that women have received and that women are showing themselves in various fields over the years. So I would say that there is greater participation, greater acceptance of women in all fields. Would you like to give a message to all the women? I would say that we must possibly raise and work with the men around us to have the conversation of equality and we must respect all other women around us and really love the concept of sisterhood. Any thoughts on if you were to rewind your clock and go back to the 60s and compare to the women in the 60s and what they are now in the 20th century? 
I see two things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Of course, at a certain level, you see a lot of women in the public spaces. You see girls and women enrolling in colleges, studying, joining the workforce, and so on and so forth. And okay. yet, what is very sad and possibly baffling is that India is the only country where the number of women in the workforce have actually gone down. in the world so we are 10% to 11% decrease in women participation in the workplace has happened over the last 10 years and that's really baffling like so while we have made so much progress but the same percentage of women are not joining the workforce so at a social level yes you see women being more free in the society but at the same time there's something that's happening which we need to possibly think and work on Thank you very much for talking to us all and imparting a message across to all the women. Thank you very Bye. much, ma'am. We now have with us Simran Sodi, a journalist. Could you like tell us something about the Nari Shakti which we are facing now? Nari Shakti is a very important concept and I think it's also more important because this comes from our own culture. when we say nari shakti we are also emphasizing the culture code that if you look at india's history if you look at culture as you pointed out also trained in odissi if you see our dancers also the power and the strength of a woman it's something which has come to us through ages so this is not a new concept as such but sometimes i feel maybe with time we forgot and it's time to one recognize our own roots and recognize the fact that the strength of a woman or nari shakti has been a concept in our culture and in our thought process forever and that's something that needs to be relooked and reworked on you as a author do you reflect that in your writing yes very much the fact that i'm an author also comes from the fact that as children we were very encouraged to read to write our parents that is something i would like to reach out to every young woman today that read and write and develop your own thoughts it will give you your own personality and then you decide how you want to take it forward thank you very much simranji it was a pleasure talking to you spreading a beautiful message on nari shakti thank you very much friends we have dr vaishali bhardwaj with us now professor and head of the department of gastroenterology pgi mer rml hospital and she has various publications well it's indeed a pleasure to have you here with us dr ji as a doctor would you like to share your thoughts on nari shakti being a doctor and being a woman hasn't been easy you know it comes with lot of plus and minuses and uh, since today we are talking about international women day and removing the gender bias i will say that yeah it is difficult but it is not something which is not achievable anything that you would like to share on this issue of uh, gender bias yeah a lot of changes have happened since i started i came into medical profession when we were in our medical college we were equal 50 50 50 females and 50 males but as i went into my further studies for my during my post graduation i was the only female among 10 males then for my super specialization again it was the same story but now over the years things are changing and i see more and more females joining our field because gastroenterology used to be a male dominated field previously but these days lot of females are coming so i feel the gender bias is slowly decreasing in our field itself would you like to share a message for aspiring students strive harder reach your dreams of course there will be issues but if there are people who will pull you down there will be people who will be there on whom you can lean on and they'll help you so keep progressing keep uh, reaching for your goals thank you very thank much you, thank you ma'am thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you yeah. Well friends we have with us Dr Rashmi Singh an IAS officer and is the current director of WCD with an additional charge of special secretary and director social welfare government of Delhi how is your ministry celebrating the women's day department basically with the government of Delhi and in terms of celebration it's not that the department like you know individually would be talking about its schemes and programs but rather like the idea is to celebrate the achievement of each girl who is special each woman who is special now how that is being done is like last evening let me tell you that at one of our like very unique complexes which is called nirmal chaya in delhi where are girls from very difficult circumstances women from difficult circumstances who have braved all kinds of challenges in life they are there so for me the actual celebration 
collaboration was in terms of like recognizing the fact that they could come up on the stage, talk about the journey, feel a sense of like solidarity with each other in terms of like yeah, being able to encourage them that life is not an open and shut case. There's so much more to look forward. And we have all the caregivers, their superintendents, encouraging them, showcasing various kinds of vocational initiatives which are happening. So these may not be in the nomenclature of a definite scheme, but the idea for empowerment of women, beginning with like looking at who's most vulnerable, who needs to be given a hope in life, who has nothing like probably look forward if you do not infuse that spirit of optimism in them that life holds so much more promise. Opportunities are there, but you need to know about about it. So that's the kind of thing which in my view is more important. It is celebrating womanhood as a whole and facing all the insecurity, the challenges with all the positive forces, positivism which we can have to give confidence to each other. Each woman is capable of giving so much in her individual life, in the family, in the society, in the nation's growth and development. But she has to like also recognize the innate potential within her to be able to like Joham Ketne Pratibha ka vikas. So Avsar to hai opportunity to hai, lekin pratibha ke vikas ke liye hume confidence bhi chahiye, self-awareness chahiye, self-consciousness chahiye. To ye hai hamare meri nazar mein sabse bada ek celebration of womanhood. The Prime Minister is also stressing on nari shakti. Yes, so the shakti is like, you know, innate in the women, but the idea is to evoke the sense of power, that empowerment. And for me, power and empowerment is not just about self. If a woman feels, you know, she feels that she's able to help, like the more vulnerable, maybe a girl child in need, you know, who's like probably lost both parents during COVID. She's from a poor family. She needs to be reached out to be able to like bring the various kinds of linkages with schemes and services for this girl child. Or maybe a woman who has nobody, but like there are opportunities so link her with the schemes and services. So that's real empowerment. It's also about a process. You have to go through a process of like the journey itself where there are challenges, yet like you're in the right track. It was indeed a pleasure talking to you and you spreading the message of Nari Shakti. I'm sure all the women who are listening to us at the moment will be absolutely enlightened. Thank you Thanks very much. Lot. Thank you Thank and you all the much. best. Thank you very much. We now have with us Shobhna Narayan, a recognized Indian Kathak dancer and a career officer with the Indian Audit and Account Service. She's been performing all over India and internationally. And of course, she has the Padma Shri and been trained by the late Bhrithi Maharaji. Being a renowned Kathak dancer and career officer, how do you relate this to the gender bias? I never thought in terms of gender bias throughout my life. I just thought that, you know, if I am doing my work is good and I am sincere and honest about it, it will be recognized or not recognized. I mean, if it is not good, then it will not be recognized. But if it's good, then it will be recognized irrespective of my gender. So I've always had that attitude in life and I've never believed in if it was because I was a girl or I was a woman and this happened to me or that happened to me. I feel that in society, if I go with a preset mind, that means I'm showing my own weakness. I feel the same society puts it, creates obstacles for you. But if you tackle the situation properly, and I've always seen that that same society comes around and, you know, accepts you for what you are. You as an eminent woman would like to spread the message of Nari Shakti. Nari Shakti comes from within. There is a Shakti within each one of us. And it is for us to recognize it. It is for us to develop it. First of all, we have to learn to understand our own positive and um, pressing on the word our negative. So we have to work on our negatives so that we make it more sort of work on it towards a betterment. And that means that we just stay on our positive. That also has to be honed and polished. That was indeed a very beautiful message to all our listeners. Thank you very much for giving us your precious time. Thank you. Women Empowerment, Nari Shakti, overcomes all barriers of gender bias. All that is needed is to mobilize not only the civil society, but all of society. It is time we all see gender as a spectrum instead of two sets of opposing ideals. This is Zool India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to World News. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that Indian economy is once again picking up momentum after once in a century pandemic. He asserted that this is a reflection of government's economic decisions and strong foundation of economy. The Prime Minister was addressing a post-budget webinar on financing for growth and aspirational economy. Mr. Modi highlighted that the government has taken many steps to maintain the momentum of high growth in this budget. He said the government of India has tried to accelerate financial and economic growth by encouraging foreign capital flows and reducing tax on infra investment creating institutions. In this budget, the government has growth ke is momentum to keep the momentum foreign capital flows ko protsahit karke infrastructure investment par tax kam karke niif gift city aur naye dfi jaise sansthan banakar humne financial economic growth ko tez gati dene ka prayas kiya hai security advisor to the prime minister of bangladesh major general retired tariq ahmed siddiq called on Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Delhi on Tuesday, said an official press release. Prime Minister Modi fondly recalled his visit to Bangladesh in March 2021. He conveyed his best wishes to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Major General Retired Siddiq thanked the Prime Minister for strengthening India-Bangladesh friendship and standing firmly with Bangladesh in times of crises, including the COVID-19 pandemic. The Prime Minister commended the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in ensuring all-round development of Bangladesh and expressed his commitment to work with her to further strengthen India-Bangladesh ties. The Indian Minister of Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution and Textiles, Piyush Goyal, has urged to explore potential areas of investment like textiles, jute products, leather and footwear, active pharmaceutical ingredient for pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, digital health and education services, agribusiness, electronics and renewable energy between India and Bangladesh. Addressing the inaugural session of India-Bangladesh stakeholders meet on Monday, the Minister listed four focus areas for strengthening India-Bangladesh relationship. He said that during the COVID-19 pandemic, the supply chain between the two countries was maintained without interruption. On to sports now. India tops the medal tally in International Shooting Sport Federation ISSF World Cup 2022 in Cairo. The Indian team finished on the top of the medal tally with a total of seven medals comprising four gold, two silver and one bronze. Norway, who won six medals, that are three gold, one silver and two bronze, claimed the second spot on the medals tally. France were third with three goals out of 20 on offer. Indian shooters won two medals on the final day of the ISSF World Cup 2022 in Cairo, Egypt on Monday. In the last event of the tournament, Rhythm Sangwan and Anish Bhanwala won the 25-meter rapid-fire pistol mixed team gold medal match against Thailand by defeating them 17-7. Earlier in the day, the Indian trio of Gurpreet Singh, Anish Bhanwala and Bhave Shikhavat lost the gold medal match of the men's 25-meter rapid-fire pistol team competition to Germany, 7-17. On Sunday, in the women's 25-meter pistol team event final, India defeated Singapore, 17-13, to clinch their third gold of the World Cup. Rahi Sarnobat, Isha Singh and Rhythm Sangwan defeated the Singaporean trio of Xiu Hong, Shan Chi and Ling Chiao Nicole Tan in the gold medal matchup. This was Isha Singh's second gold and third medal of the World Cup as she had won the women's 10 meter air pistol team event to add to the silver she won in the women's 10 meter air pistol individual event. Last week, Saurav Chaudhary clinched India's first gold medal in Cairo. 19-year-old Indian defeated Michael Schwald of Germany, 16-6, in the gold medal match of the men's 10-meter air pistol event. In the ongoing ICC Women's World Cup, Australia defeated Pakistan by seven wickets in the round-robin match. Chasing 191 runs set by Pakistan, Australia overhauled the target for the loss of three wickets in 34.4 overs. Earlier, Pakistan were restricted to 190 for six in the allotted 50 overs due to Australian spirited bowling performance. With the win, Australia have rose to the top of the standings, while Pakistan are lost in the standings after remaining winless from the two matches. And now a report from the business world. 
Recovering from early losses, the Sensex climbed 581 points or to settle at 53,424. The Nifty added 150 points to finish at 16,013. Among global markets, Asian stocks declined following overnight fall in the U.S. share markets. China's Shanghai Composite Index lost 2.4%, Japan's Nikkei 225 tumbled 1.7%, and Hong Kong's Hang Seng plunged 1.4%. Singapore's Straits Times ended 1.2% down and South Korea's Kospi fell 1.1%. European share markets were mixed in intraday trade. Oil prices climbed more than 2.5% as the United States said it was willing to ban Russian oil imports, stoking investor fears over inflation and slowing economic growth. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading around $127.10 per barrel. Back home, gold prices rose 410 rupees at multi-commodity exchange for April contracts. The precious metal was trading at 53,930 rupees per 10 gram. Silver prices also climbed 1,000 350 rupees to 71,320 rupees per kilogram for March contracts when reports last came in. And in the forex market, the rupee appreciated 6 pesa against the US dollar. The domestic currency settled at 76 rupees and 92 pesa per dollar. Anubha Rohatki for World News, All India Radio. And now let's take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. First, let's take a look at the press reports on China. Reuters reports that China and India should help each other accomplish goals instead of draining each other's energies, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said on Monday. Xinhua reported Chinese President Xi Jinping on Monday stressed running the military in accordance with the law and enhancing the rule of law in national defense and military building. SCMP reported China's foreign minister said on Monday that Taiwan issue is fundamentally different from the Ukraine situation as it is a purely domestic affair rather than between two countries. Sky News headlines China must end its chilling silence and act to bring about an end to the Ukraine-Russia war, Australian Prime Minister says. SCMP reported the U.S. has warned China that actions speak louder than words after Beijing continued to offer tacit support to Russia while also showing willingness to help broker peace in Ukraine. Now let's take a look at what made the headlines in Nepal. The Himalayan Time reports that the secretary-level meeting of the Joint Task Force of Nepal and India formed to facilitate supply of petroleum products and gas concluded. The third virtual meeting of the Joint Task Force that was formed between Nepal and India in March 2017 in the course of agreement of supply of petroleum products concluded on Monday. Khabar Hub reports that the Nepali Congress NC is conducting a month-long door-to-door campaign for the local elections. Khabar Hub writes that Nepal Home Minister Bal Krishna Khan has begun discussions at different level in a bid to forge agreement on the bill relating to the amendment of Nepal Citizenship Act 2063. According to the Kathmandu Post, Nepal India Railway Service becomes uncertain as ordinance has expired. Khabar Hub reports that the Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dweba has extended best wishes to all on the occasion of 112th International Women's Day. And now let's have some brief news from Afghanistan. The Khamma Press cites a report by International Organization of Migration which says that close to 20 million people above 18 are unemployed in Afghanistan. Tulu News writes that Afghanistan and Iraq are at the top of the list of countries impacted by terrorism in 2021, according to the Global Terrorism Index published by the Institute for Economics and Peace, IEP. And now a quick look at the headlines once again. About 18,000 Indians stranded in Ukraine brought back by special flight so far under Operation Ganga. New Delhi says all Indian students safely evacuated from Sumi city of Ukraine. India raises concerns at UN Security Council over humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, calls for immediate ceasefire and need for return to the path of dialogue and diplomacy. India and China decide to hold 15th round of core commander level talks on in the 11th of this month. International flights to and from India to resume from the 27th of March. India's President Ramnath Govind, Vice President M. Venkai Naidu and PM Manarendra Modi extend greetings on International Women's Day. India tops medal tally with four gold, two silver and one bronze in International Shooting Sport Federation World Cup in Cairo. And in Women's Cricket World Cup, Australia defeat Pakistan by seven wickets in round robin match. And now, before we end the bulletin, let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artist from Mauritius.
that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.